and Luna. It's the Break Free video blo vlog blog. It is Zach Sloan. Here we are. Break Free episode five. Are we up to five? I think, yeah, which is so wild. And this will be our last one of 2017. That's right. Um, so yeah, thanks for everybody who's been tuning in and watching. Yes, thank you guys so much. You are all awesome sauce. Um, and today, this was supposed to be last month's episode, but we we got to work with uh, Ryan Carell. We sort of put things on pause, and I explained that a little bit in the last video. But December's episode, Ann Luna is going to talk a little bit about her creative process. So, yeah, so looking at process and specifically around songwriting, but I guess this probably could go along with other things, too. So, um, you know, there's those moments when you drive in your car and a song just pops in your head and it's there kind of completely. But we're not going to do that because if that happens to you, that's great. And you don't need me to tell you anything <laughs> about that. That's, truthfully, that's only happened to me probably once. And even then, you know, there's things I tweaked a little bit. Right. So what I have found more often than not is um, I'll get little blips or little bits of inspiration and I'll write them down or record them somehow and then I'll come back to them. Or if I am really what I found to be the most <laughs> productive for me, it's number one here, I don't know if this is showing up, is the show up anyway. And so <laughs> if, I, if I have a regular practice, um, things always come up and there's usually something, even if I don't like most of what I write, there's a little seed or a jewel in there that ah, I kind of like and I'll come back to. Mm -hmm. So it's that whole, if you think, if you're waiting until you're ready, you're going to be waiting a long time. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. Well, and there's a big, there's a big fear part that like I talk to a lot about people who are maybe starting a business. That's always like, Oh, I just need to wait till I'm a little bit more ready. I just need to be a little bit more prepared. And then that goes on forever. <laughs> It does, and that could should be for whatever, starting a new job, for us quitting our jobs and becoming full-time musicians. Yeah, no kidding. Um, for people becoming parents, or, yeah, oh, man. There's a lot of things that, yeah, the prep work could go on endlessly. That being said, to show up anyway, you can, well, I'm kind of skipping along my list here, but we'll come back to these. Ah. Welcome the muse. And with this is kind of the, you show up and you're as ready as you can be, as in you have paper with you, <laughs> or you've got something you can record on. And since most, or a lot of people have smartphones these days, it's not that hard to, you know, there's free recording apps. And usually they come on your phone anyway. And it's just something to get an idea. I have a good friend who, um, you know, he still uses a handheld cassette recorder, you know, there's no shame in that. And if it works, do it, whatever you're comfortable with. I did that until about four or five years ago. Like I still had like a mini tape and I finally moved to the phone because the tape broke. <laughs> right. I was just like, I still have a cassette recorder that's got some good ideas on it. So I keep it around. Yeah. So. And also for me, I find if I have just a good stack of blank paper and a pen that writes well, that's a little easier for me. But on the other hand, if I have like this really nice leather bound journals and I've got like this beautiful carved fountain pen, sometimes it's too intimidating for me. And so a lot of my song ideas inevitably they end up on the back of junk envelopes. <laughs> totally. <laughs> And yeah, and receipts. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, you use what you have and you find what works. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I say, if it if it helps you to have the tools that help ideas to flow, do that. Like I, say, I end up utilizing a lot of different stuff. <laughs> yeah. So that's part of it. Um, you're showing up immediately for me whenever i sat down and i'm like i'm finally i'm there i've got some paper ready and i'm gonna go for it 
if I'm not careful, even if I am, really comes in and says things like, oh, you should really, you should really be doing laundry right now, or <laughs> things that really doesn't seem important five minutes ago. But now that I've like carved out this space and I'm about to, you know, potentially be real honest with myself and create some stuff, uh, the critic shows up. Yeah. So, Zach, uh, got some other things that a critic might say. No, no. This is, and for the list, I'm not, for viewers and listeners, I'm not bagging on Anne. I'm playing the role <laughs> of the inner critic. I love Anne. I but asked Anne, you, such a good friend. Are you even going to write something good anyway? Yeah, who am I to do this? Have I ever written anything good? Yeah, well, you think you're Bob Dylan or something? Come on. <laughs> so, this, my friends, is when we must, we must suspend the critic. <laughs> and we do not edit prematurely. And so, the critic will come in a lot. And so what we do is we acknowledge the critic. Zach, thank you for pointing out <laughs> <laughs> that I'm no Bob Dylan and I might never write a good song. Maybe I've never written a good song, but you know what? You're great at what you do. You keep me safe, but I'd, I don't need you right now. Right now, we're just having a good time. We're not, it's not serious. Yeah, yeah, you can go <laughs> to the corner and whenever we're ready to edit, you can come back. <laughs> oh, I'm an amazing editor. <laughs> True. So, we need the critic, just not now, just now. So you might have to do this a lot. <laughs> be like, the laundry can wait. Um, I'm really not that hungry. <laughs> you must wait. <laughs> so, yeah. Like I said, there will be a lot of distractions and paying attention is hard and it takes practice. That's why we keep showing up anyway. <laughs> so, pool usage. Sometimes I show up and I've got, I'm, I'm really happy and in love or something and I just want to write about this, right? So that's cool. But sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes I just am showing up or, you know, if I have strong emotions about something, that's great. That's kind of instant fuel. Other times, eh, I'm just kind of hanging out. So one of the things I like to do <laughs> is I grab instruments that are not my primary instrument because I don't have all of these things practiced out and I don't really know what I'm doing. So <laughs> I can just play with sound and my critic already knows, and you're not a ukulele player. Yeah, that's cool. And so, if I'm in tune or not, tuning can be part of the creative process. And so, I really, I just start putting my fingers down, whether I know chord shapes or not, or if I remember some. Probably should do that. So, yeah, like I say, if I know some chord shapes, and I like it, I might start humming to that. And I might put down some other fingers and and then I usually I'll end up, especially on ukulele, which is very friendly. <laughs> um, there's a lot of good sus chords and different um, voices right. that for me, they're harder for me to find on other instruments. And so oh, for sure. Yeah, I say, since ukulele is easy on my fingers and it's very portable, then I'm just going to start playing with chords and figure if I like something. And yeah. And for, yeah. And for all you guitar players who don't have a ukulele, alternate tunings are the same thing. Yeah. Right? Throw your guitar, like I do that all the time, I'll throw my guitar and open whatever, like open C tunings and something I've been messing with. You know, it's yeah. the same type of thing, you know, it just, it forces you to do something that's new and it's, and like Ann said, you can sort of excuse yourself if you're not very good. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's just going to open up your ear to some new sound. And so that, you know, for you guitar players that are feeling, 
really good with G, C, and D and find yourself doing the same chord progression all the time, which I do this too. What's wrong with it? But if you want to get away from that, do an alternate mm -hmm. tuning, grab an instrument that you don't know what you're doing. And yeah. So yeah, like I say, I'll sit around with the ukulele and I'll just start, start moving one finger at a time. And I'll be like, oh yeah. Oh, descending lines, and then I start feeling kind of good about myself. Right. <laughs> say, oh, I'm sounding like I know what I'm doing. Even though if you asked me what these chords were, I could figure it out, but I'm not fast like that because this isn't my main instrument. So, <laughs> 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 so see, Critic, you're over there because I don't have to listen to you right now. <laughs> so, yeah. And so, if I'm if I'm wanting, I can I can leave a recorder on right now, thinking that I'll come back to things. But more often than not, sometimes that's even pressure for me, and I don't want that. <laughs> and so <laughs> um, I'll mess with something till I get a sound I like. And about you, Lily, too. Bar chords easier. So yeah, if I'm finding a sound I like, I might record that. And oftentimes for me, some lyrical or melody line will come along with that. And so I might just hum something to that. And if it's too high for me, I'll take it down <laughs> or go to different registers. Another one of my favorite tools, maybe I've got, maybe I've got some chords I'm liking, but I need a groove. And so we have drum genius. I think maybe you saw that quickly. So it's, it's uh, um, yeah. whatever you have that will give you a beat and some kind of groove. Like I say drum genius is just the, the app that I happen to be familiar with and like a lot. Drum genius um, is great, but any free drum machine to your yeah. point will work. And for you Mac users, GarageBand users, there's a ton of drum loops already in that program. So you just go and, and you find one and you put it. Yeah. And so, so I'll go. The beautiful thing about this is it gives me rhythms that I probably wouldn't think of on my own. So. Oh and, yeah. So, so if I'm like, oh yeah, I wouldn't come up with that and then, and maybe I'm like, oh no. And then the critic might come back and say, like, and literally, You're not a funk player. Stop it. <laughs> right. Look at look at the whiteness of your skin. Oh, you've got no room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my critic says this to me a lot. Yeah. And then we'll go off on other things too. But if I'm like, hey, yeah, no, we're we're not going there today, man. <laughs> And then, and then if I could just chill out with that, and whether I'm like, I'm like, oh, maybe I just kind of like that. It's kind of fun, yeah. And whether, or I'm like, oh man, I'm totally not feeling that today. Yeah, right. that sucks. You know, and so I'm gonna go where there's some energy, right? Right, so right. I beat my head, myself over the head with a rhythm that I'm not feeling that day. So, you know, maybe then I'll go and look at something else that's, um, ah, slower. Maybe I'm. Yeah. Sometimes <sighs> a change of tempo is what you need. Change of tempo, and like you can adjust that on your drum loop machines too. So that's very cool tool usage. And maybe I'm. Maybe I'm feeling more soulful. <laughs> and maybe, maybe the ukulele's not working for me. <laughs> so... All right, she's got a soulful drum loop going. Time to get the banjo. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So I might grab a guitar. And I'm also not a guitar player, but I know enough basic chords that I can figure some stuff out. And what's cool too, you can either get books or look up guitar chords and teach yourself a new chord you know and this will be and again that new sound can be impetus for a new yeah. song so that or for a 
or substitution yeah. chords, right? Like those are the types of things that can really yeah. get yeah. you going. Yeah. Oh man, this is really out of thing. You should like pause this so that I can tune a guitar. <laughs> See, listeners, so viewers, we'll be right back. All right, listeners, viewers, we are back. Anne has tuned her guitar into oblivion. That's it's right. Gone. It's gone now. I tuned it so well, it just spontaneously combusted. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens if you, a, a true perfect fifth will blow up your guitar. You know, it's kind of like matter and antimatter. It's just. Yes. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a deep that's a deep science cut. I like it. <laughs> we'll be writing a song about this later. So, <laughs> talking about you show up, you suspend your critic. We're not editing yet, so it's not needed. We've got some some kind of groove going, some kind of lyric going. So this kind of goes along with suspending the critic. Once I've got an idea and I'm kind of liking it, the critic, my critic, one of the things come and say like, oh man, well, such and so would do this a lot better than you. So Zach, as my fellow inner critic, would you like to expound upon this? I mean, there are just, you know, like there are other people who are already doing this. They do it better. They're already famous, you know? Alison Krauss, she got to work with Robert Plant. Just saying. So why should I be trying? Why should I yeah. be doing this? I really just, should have been doing laundry this whole time. You should have been doing laundry, you know. I've seen my life and other people's too. Yeah. So just, let's not go into the spiral again. <laughs> so this final point on here. Don't compare yourself to others. It will kill your creativity every time. <laughs> That's so true, actually. That's, yeah, I, that might be the most valuable thing. I think the most valuable point to me personally right now is the comparison trap. Oh, man, it, it trips me up all the time. Even when I've had, like, some success and been like, you know, I really love writing songs and I like doing this. And there's been people who say that they like my songs who weren't my own, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Even if I've got some validation there. Yeah, so, but I still get into this comparison trap if I'm not careful. So this should probably be something that I just like, in the place where I regularly write and create, I need to probably have this like plastered, don't compare yourself to others or something on those lines. So yeah, so my friends, I hope some of these points have uh, helped you out with just showing up and being willing to get these creative juices flowing for songwriting. That's, these are the tricks that I've gathered over the years. Well, Zach, and, like to add to that? No, I, I think you hit it. And there's, there's nothing, I, I don't think there's anything I would add to your list. I think the only question I would have, and maybe this is for next episode, how long does it take you to finish a song? Oh, this, this is such a good question. Okay, so, and it, <laughs> with one of those frustrating answers of, well, it depends. You lawyer. <laughs> so there's the beautiful songs that come like fully formed jewels or perfectly ripe fruit that you just pluck. <laughs> and it's like these gifts of the universe. Like, ah, oh, thank you. This song's great. You know, that do happen in about five minutes and that you do very little editing you know, once it's there. Yeah, and that's great. Other songs I have been working on for years and still aren't finished. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's probably like a formula there of like inspiration times. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, inspiration, motivation, willingness to show up. And there's other songs that are actually probably done, but because I've got my own hangups around them, be like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to share that with anybody yet. But right. They're just setting. So I guess another point I would add to this, um, don't throw things away. You know, you might come back and be like, ah, it was a good idea. So don't hit delete prematurely or, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's true, right? Like, I was just writing a song last week with a 
Teresa Mahoney. In fact, I was wearing her T-shirt uh, okay, for our yeah. last episode. <laughs> and we got all the way, and like we just couldn't get the bridge. We couldn't get the bridge, and I got home, and I went, I got this other song I wrote with this other dude where I love the bridge, but I hate the rest of the song. And this, it, like the themes lined up, and it was like, bridge. I'm so glad I didn't throw that song away because I, I totally just ripped from it, right. you know? Yeah, no, exactly. And like I said, there, there'll be little bits, and I'm like, yeah, I think actually you belong over here. Yeah. Yeah, and it's your song and your creation. They don't have to, yeah, you mm -hmm. can take them apart and reuse them and rebuild them however you want. So a huge thing is just giving yourself permission to create however that looks for you, whatever, whatever the, you need to do to, you know, maybe you need to like write yourself a permission slip <laughs> 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 or have a friend do it. Like you have permission to sit down for 20 minutes every day and just play with words and melody and chords. I love how in this episode, Anne Luna has gone from lawyer to teacher. <laughs> <laughs> sounds familiar to me. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's a, a, probably a good stopping spot for this episode. And in our next episode, we're going to come back. And Anne, what are you going to talk about next? So next, we're going to look at, okay, you've got an idea. Now, how much do you invite the critic back in? How do we form this thing? That's right. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs>